Hey everyone, welcome to the Roto Grinders Morning Grind podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It is Wednesday, it's May 22nd, it is 2024. We have a 10 game MLB slate to talk about here on today's podcast. Joined today by Mr. Marvel himself, TJ. What's happening, my friend? Doing pretty well, but quite, quite tired. Is it 10 p.m. Eastern? Is it 6 a.m. that we're recording this? Is it 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. when people listen to this? I don't know. Time doesn't exist to me anymore. But uh, happy to be here with you chatting some baseball. Yeah, welcome to dadhood. I don't know if I've seen you um, since, but welcome to dadhood. I'm pumped for you, and you're going to be tired for a while. <laughs> no other way around it, buddy. Um, get used to it. So, uh, yeah, we got 10 games night before recording. What's up, YouTube? Hope everyone is having a fantastic Tuesday night. Hopefully, you're having a better Tuesday than Atlanta and Chicago and my Baltimore-Kansas City stacks. Um, yes, I stack Kansas City with Baltimore. Isn't that fun? It's for fun, right? Um, Yeezy said he has a good sweat going on right now, so that's awesome. Um, my best team is a Houston sack with Cal Quantrill, so I'm rooting for Cal Quantrill. Um, Me too. Let's get we're cheering together as we uh, as we record. I will. And so yesterday, I just wanted to really quickly touch on this. Yesterday, somebody on YouTube posted on the comments on the YouTube page, which hey, we appreciate all the comments. I try to read them daily. And they said, hey, if you just took a second to look at Cardi's ownership, you'll have a better idea of how this is going to look projected ownership-wise. 99.9% of the time, Cardi projection and lineup HQ is not ready when we're recording the podcast. Um, So we do the best we can. We try to break it down per stats and and our thoughts. And I know that doesn't always work out and it's not always great, but it's the best we can do the night before. I know a lot of people like the podcast the night before the goal is to continue to do the podcast the night before, but I just wanted to touch on why we don't look at projected ownership because 99.9% of the time it's not available. All right, let's talk some baseball housekeeping's done. I just wanted to touch on that. I saw that and I wanted to like address it on the podcast instead of just, you know, commenting back on YouTube. So we got San Diego at Cincinnati It is a 640 Eastern start on the main slate. There is a five game early slate that starts at one o'clock. We will have uh, grinders live and crunch time tomorrow morning for it. Or if you're listening to this podcast on Wednesday this morning. Um, So at 11 o'clock, Dean and blender will be on grinders live. And then myself Roth and cheese will be on crunch time around noon Eastern to break down the early slate for everyone on Wednesday. San Diego, Cincinnati, King against Martinez, nine and a half total. San Diego, 130 favorites. Any interest here in Michael King? Yeah, I think you kind of have to. It's not ideal that this is in Cincinnati, small ballpark, good for bats. But if you're playing like one or two lineups, totally understand if you don't get to him. Um, especially if he, I don't, I don't like, like you just said, it's kind of tough to know how ownership's going to come out the night before not sure how much is going to gravitate to him but if you're playing a lot of lineups he always has to stay in the pool unless you're just fading for ownership reasons because and if you look at his game log you can see why massive ceiling over 30 point ceiling and the floor is tiny as well it just depends if his stuff is clicking that day or not is he going to be walking a bunch of batters is it or is he going to be striking out a bunch of batters and so um I do have interest because I'm the type of guy that plays 150 lineups, but the ballpark and the power of Cincinnati scares me. Yeah. um, And and like King, they price him up. Um, You know, his price has been down in the six and seven K range. Most of the season, they priced him up against the Rockies last time out. Did not pitch great. uh, Was very chalky. And then now against another, you know, pretty high strikeout Cincinnati team, you know, he, his price is back up there. So, I like the ceiling for for him for large field tournaments. Um, my concern, obviously, is always like, is he going to walk people? Is he going to struggle? This ballpark, like you mentioned, is always concerning. Um, so there is like, there's plenty of concern if you're playing Kings. So like, I would definitely put him as like a large field tournament play only here. Uh, Nick Martinez on the other side of this game, probably the most tilting start of the year. Um, last time out, 
against uh, the Dodgers. Nick Martinez had five really solid innings, pitched his best game of the year. He's a 17% K guy. He's not a huge strikeout guy. This is a huge ballpark upgrade for the Padres. He's not fully stretched out. There's just no chance I'm playing Nick Martinez today. No, absolutely not. I think there are other pitchers either cheaper or just slightly more expensive that are a lot more interesting here. I'm not getting there either. Um, Brandon, did TJ pay you to say that? Just curious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk San Diego bats. Uh, any interest here in the Padres? I mean, I think so a little bit. Um, ballpark is good. Nick Martinez is striking out a lot of guys. Um, probably more as a mini stack than a full stack. Uh, I, I think I'd want a power hunt here as opposed to loading up as a full stack. And so going to some Tatis, going to some Cronenworth, um, I'd probably let, and then just take a peek at the lineup, see if there's anybody else I'd want to target earlier, uh, like in the top five. But I don't think I'd want a full stack here um, just because it's a big slate and I think I can do better, um, but still willing to target some of the guys like Tatis, like Cronenworth. Huge ballpark upgrade for the Padres in this one. And I'm actually opposite of you. I want to full stack them or fade them. Um, the Padres are gutless. They're an awesome offense. They're an elite talented team. There's just days. They just don't show up. And when those days happen, the fade works. And when they show up, they can produce 10 plus runs with multiple home runs. And this game's in Cincinnati. Nick Martinez, is a low strikeout pitcher. He tends to get struggle with fly balls. Um, I'm going to full stack them or fade them. I, I think that, you know, in my 20 entry max build is typically what I'll play on this slate. I'm going to have a little exposure here to full stacks Padres, probably in the 10 to 20% range. Um, I'll be like Dean and just play 10% of everybody. Uh, Cincinnati side of this game. I mean, I, I forgot. Just- I'm supposed to report to you. Oh. Uh, Dean, Dean was talking smack about you on grinders live today. And oh, nice. so he, uh, he was making fun of the the on uh, uh, your your name pronunciation and uh, being unable to pronounce Brandon Fod. Oh, that's okay. I don't care. Um, he doesn't. <laughs> and he also said joke, he also so claims even better. He also claims that uh, when he appears on Grinders Live, those have been the most download. Or sorry, on Morning Grind, those have been the most downloaded podcast episodes of all time. Well, I know for a fact that's not true, but um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> not going to put you on blast, you know, but that's not even close to true. <laughs> I told him I'm going to be producing the show uh, later this week. Me and Will are on together. And so I'm going to look at the numbers and I'm going to see just uh, just how, how well that episode with him did this month. I could tell you that it, he's probably not going to be asked back anytime soon because of the ratings. So um, there you go. Yeah. All joking aside, um, Cincinnati side of this game, any interest here in the Reds? Yeah. I think uh, how you feel about the Padres is how I feel about the Reds. We have no idea which Michael King we're going to get. And so I want to have a piece of them. If we get the good Michael King, obviously it's not going to work out. If we get the bad Michael King, this could end up being one of the highest scoring stacks on the slate. He's almost, uh, King is almost in like that Robbie Ray territory of like quite a few years ago where you have no idea if it's going to be an 8K pitcher or a six walk and six home run pitcher. Um, So I think absolutely I have interest in them for tournaments. I think they have a really high upside, but like King on the pitching side of things, I do think they have a low floor too. No one tell Dean, but his episode was like the least downloaded episode over the last two weeks. I just looked. Um, so sorry, <laughs> sorry, Dean. No, no one tell him though. No. Uh, let 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 him continue to be awesome. I have interested. In, I'm interested in like a Cincinnati full stack. When Michael King's off, he's very hittable. Um, when he's on, he. I mean, this guy has a ton of talent. Like when he's pitching well. And this team is a high strikeout team. One of the reasons that, like we mentioned, potentially taking some shots on Michael King. But, like, when he's off, I mean, we saw it last time out against the Rockies. Like, they they just hit everything he was throwing. Um, they He wasn't missing bats at all. And, like, I know I watched the game because I played him a ton, and his pitches were just super hittable that night. So, in this ballpark, I think you have to have some interest. And, like, 
De La Cruz and the guys around him, they have so much ceiling on a nightly basis that it's really hard not to have interest in Cincinnati. Probably more of like three or four man stacks for me than like full stacks, but this ballpark's too good. Really good hitting weather. And I mean, this game has the highest total on the slate. So um, definitely interested in both of these offenses. We both like both offenses. Just prefer the full stack on the, on the other side. I, I will say like, I'm not going to sit here and say I won't full stack Cincinnati. There's a good chance that I'll build some full stack Cincinnati teams on top of it too. It's just, it's so hard to judge because Cincinnati changes their lineup so often that like, Sometimes it just doesn't make sense to full stack them because of pinch hit risk and stuff. But yeah. All right. Milwaukee at Miami, seven and a half total. Milwaukee, a 144 favorite. Here we got Freddie Peralta against Jesus Lazardo. Um, Peralta, 10 to really struggling recently, but he gets Miami in Miami. What are we doing with Peralta here? That will depend fully on ownership for me. Um, if Freddie Peralta ends up being one of the higher owned pitchers on the slate, I will just say, Hey, maybe there's something wrong with him and he doesn't have it right now. Um, I'll go underweight, maybe hit the X button. That's kind of what I've been doing in MME more often than not lately in general is trying to pinpoint sometimes all of them, depending on who they are, but at least two or three of the chalkier pitchers on the slate and just X them out of my pool entirely so that I can get heavily overweight on some lesser owned guys. Um, and so if, if he's going to be highly owned, I'll, I'll happily X him out and just say, hopefully he's not right. If he's low owned, I'll, I'll double the field and try and get as much of him as possible because it's Freddie Peralta. We know the strikeout upside is there. And even if he hadn't had been struggling, something was off that could turn on a dime any, any day. And a my, the weak Miami offense and a great pitching ballpark like Miami is a great spot to do it. So it'll be ownership, uh, dependent for me on Peralta. If it's low owned, I love him. If he's high owned, I'm comfortable fading. Kyle Tucker with his second home run of the night. Um, for anybody that's sweating out some Houston stacks, that's always heck good yes. See. That's exactly what uh, we want to see. So Peralta last two times out, um, really high BABIP games. I don't think he necessarily pitched. He really pitched bad in that Chicago Cubs game, like three starts ago. Like it was like his statistics, like advanced stats, really kind of backed up him just pitching really bad in that game. But outside of that, I mean, the pitches haven't seen off i will say in the houston start last time out his his velocity was down almost a full mile an hour and his slider velocity was down like two miles an hour this is something to watch like his velocity in general in that game was way down you know he was averaging 93 on the fastball he averages 94 he was averaging 78 on the slider he usually averages 80 plus and then on the curveball his velocity was the lowest it's been in like two or three years for him in one game so Definitely going to be paying attention to the velocity issues that he had against Houston, but I'm I'm willing to just say, hey, you know what? Um, it, it's Miami and Miami. Even if he gets bad up a little in this game, I think there's plenty of strikeouts. Ownership is definitely something I think you want to consider um, because, like, if Glass now is going to be lower owned going up against Arizona, a tougher team, I'll just play Glass now because I think their ceilings are very similar. So I think like you could just say, hey, you know. Peralta and Glass now, 1A, 1B, who's going to have the lower ownership? I'll play that person. But, I mean, I definitely think Peralta, this is a good bounce back spot. The the I will say the velocity last time out is concerning. Um, very concerning. Other side of this game, Jesus Lizardo has come back, and he has looked like Jesus Lizardo. 15 strikeouts over his last two starts, two earned runs in 11 and two-thirds. And I think whatever was – nagging him or bothering him um he he might actually be back hate playing pitchers against milwaukee but i think this might be something you could take some shots here on, on lizardo yeah i think lizardo is going to end up being one of my favorite pitchers on the slate um i don't like playing pitchers against milwaukee either but their their thing is kind of they got a lot of power but they also have a lot of strikeouts that um they're probably going to have a ton of righties in there. Uh, the, the lineup from yet yeah, from Tuesday night had a 26.9% strikeout rate, and it's probably going to be something very similar with let with Yelich is the only lefty in there. And so, um, yeah, I'm really excited about Lizardo in this spot. He's just too cheap. I think the ballpark will help mitigate the power a little bit. Um, 
Obviously, it's a tiny sample size and could absolutely swap around. You'd expect it to swap around because he is giving up a lot more hard hits to righties this year than lefties. But small sample size, way bigger ISO to lefties. And so that's, and the strikeout rate is higher to righties. So that's kind of nice to see um, in an already lineup. But I think the ballpark will help mitigate the power. 7,800 is just too cheap. Wizardo is going to be one of my favorite pitchers on the slate. The price tag is too cheap if he's right. Like if he's get right, and like if he is healthy and he's going to be pitching better, then the price tag is just too cheap. Like he's priced for his struggles to start the season, and like he just hasn't struggled the last two times out and faced a tough Philadelphia team when he came back and pitched really well in that game. And like he's had the benefit of pitching at home those two games. So I like Lizardo. It's a tough spot. It, it really is. Like Milwaukee is a good offense. Um, they're one of the best offenses in baseball. I talk about it all the time. There are a little bit more strikeouts in this lineup when they're facing left-handed pitching, which is good for Lazardo. Let's talk bats here. Any interest in the Brewers' bats? Maybe just because I do kind of always stack the Brewers. Um, and so playing 150 lineups, I'll probably have some full stacks of the Brewers, a couple Sanchez or Contreras one-offs. Um, maybe same with Joey Ortiz if he gets another good lineup spot. But very, they'll be very low on my list. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like um, Ortiz against lefties. He's been fantastic. Gary the Goat, cheap catcher with a lot of power um, against left-handed pitching. It's just not the greatest ballpark. Um, Contreras, like, he's been fantastic against lefties this year, but his power numbers are down a little bit. Um, so it'd be one-offs, Adamas, Ortiz, Gary the Goat. Um, I don't think I'm stacking Milwaukee today. I just, I respect Lazardo and how he's looked recently. I think he's healthy. And like I say all the time, I watch too many Miami games because they're a local team for me and they're always on TV when I'm working. So, um, any interest in Miami in this spot? I just saw a tweet that said TJ McConnell is the Steve Nash of Luke Ridnowers. And it made me, it made me immediately lose focus because I just, I found that one hilarious, but uh, no, no Miami for me on this slate. E even if Peralta is bad, yeah, maybe they can put up some runs, but it's going to be tough to have a lot of power in this ballpark, and it's a 10-game slate. I think we can do better. Yeah, I mean, Jazz, like if Peralta is down a little bit, maybe Jazz, um, he does. He has some like reverse splits a little bit this year, Freddie Peralta, that is. So like right-handed power, so maybe like a De La Cruz or a Burger one-off, but I'm not going out of my way to play Miami bats today. San Francisco at Pittsburgh, eight total. Pittsburgh, a 120 favorite. We got Blake Snell coming back off the IL against Jared Jones. Um, he did make two rehab starts um, as he was coming back here, and he did not look great. Um, any interest in Blake Snell in this spot? I still can't do it at 8,300, even though he's cheap. And if he's he's back to Blake Snell, it's great. But I'm just not going to do it. I need to see it first. Yeah, I mean, he... I guess he looked a lot better in his second rehab start. Sorry. Um, he had 10 strikeouts over five innings um, with no runs in his second one. I was looking at something different. Um, so he looked a lot better. It's a Pittsburgh matchup. Where, I mean, I think Pittsburgh is beatable. I really hope we get some kind of pitch count, though. Like, if we get Snell is going to throw 80 to 90 pitches, I mean, 8,300 is a really fair price tag when we're going to want to pay up for some bats today. Except 80 pitches and still only three innings for Boyd Snell. Yeah, unless he's right. If he's pitching well, I mean, he's a guy that can get through innings quick. I mean... Five innings in his last AAA start's really good. That was 10 strikeouts. Um, that's a AAA lineup, which I means some could argue the bottom half of the Pittsburgh lineup might be a AAA lineup too. Um, I mean, I really, I'm really interested to see what we project his pitch count to be and if we get any kind of news here on him. Um, I think, like, I know in his first rehab start, he only threw like 45 pitches. So I really kind of... I'm curious um, to see how many pitches he threw and what we're kind of expecting here. So 80 pitches. I probably don't play a lot of him. 
90 pitches, like if they say they'll cap him around 90 pitches, I, I would have some interest in like Snell in this spot against Pittsburgh. But it'd be interesting to see if we get any kind of news. Other side of this game, Jared Jones has been really, really strong to start the year. Big strikeout stuff, um, has a big ceiling. This is not necessarily a ballpark upgrade for the Giants. Um, do we have interest in Jones with his 30.5% K rate? Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, they'll, if he's cooking, they'll let him go a little bit above 90 pitches. Um, and he's just been absolutely lights out. If there's one thing that the pirates can do right now, it is produce great young pitchers. And, uh, he is one of them. He's the Robin to Paul Skeens as Batman as it were. And so, uh, absolutely in to play some Jared Jones. Pittsburgh produces good, talented young pitchers. It's just like on a consistent basis, like Pittsburgh. To give away so they can do well for other teams. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about some of the names over the last few years, man. Uh, if we look at like the last five or ten years, it's crazy how many good pitchers have come up through that system. So I'm interested in Jared Jones for sure. Uh, as far as the Giants' bats are concerned, I mean, his biggest struggle is like left-handed power. I think that's kind of one of the reasons that I like him in this spot because like, they're missing so many of these lefties. I just, I don't know if I want to play any of these guys today. Yeah. And, uh, in terms of bats, absolutely not, but, uh, I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of Jerry Jones. Yep. Um, any interest here in the Pittsburgh bats? Yeah, I think, um, probably not as one offs. Um, but we could, if we get Snell, that's walking a lot of guys, uh, that could be, um, like, I never really like playing Pittsburgh, but if we get the bad version of Snell, it's kind of like Michael King. Um, that could be a lot of runs in a hurry if it's walk after walk after walk, and then he mixes in a couple home runs too. So um, I feel like I'm more willing to throw in a few lineup stacking against Snell than to play Snell. Yeah, Tampa's really struggled with like left-handed pitching this year, and they absolutely shelled him um, right before he went on the aisle. So I think if you're – Playing 150, I think you have to have exposure to Pittsburgh just in case, like, Snell isn't right yet. Um, so I think it's a good sign that he pitched really well in his last outing in AAA. Um, because he kind of showed up to camp late, and I don't know if he got fully there or not, you know, before they, you know, put him in there in April. So I think Pittsburgh is definitely a team you could stack. Um, Connor Joe, Nick Gonzalez has been really good against left-handed pitching in a small sample size. Obviously McCutcheon's always been good against lefties. Brian Reynolds is good, um, from the right side of the plate. So it's so just like, eh, on stacking them like fully because like the power is just so limited, but I think you just kind of stack them hoping that Blake Snell isn't right yet. Texas at Philly, no total in this game. Um, I, so I've seen, multiple re reports here but it sounds like we're gonna get dane dunning pitching for texas um he's gonna get activated on the il or from the il tomorrow morning and then he's expected to pitch um he's been out for it was like two weeks i think is what i read i assume that he's gonna be on an innings restriction kind of from what i was reading on the report from my i found a report from the texas like beat writer so i assume that we're gonna see a limited pitch count here from dunning I don't know if I'd want to play Dunning regardless in this spot, but on a pitch limit, I, I just don't see a way we're going to play Dane Dunning today. Yeah, no, me, me neither. No, uh, no Dane Dunning for me in this spot against a team like Philadelphia. Yeah, his strikeouts have been really solid. He's had some upside this year. Um, he's just a guy that gets hit hard too. And the fact that he's going to be on an innings limit, I, I think that we're going to pass. Any interest here in Walker uh, against Texas? maybe it feels weird uh texas hasn't been all that great and it, walker's just so cheap um you know obviously it was pretty terrible last game against the mets um but it's a guy with 15 to 20 point upside at 6.2k the matchup's tough but i'm playing 150 lineups and he's cheap so i i don't like it but i will be playing him yeah, he's cheap because he's awful <laughs> yeah. i know um... I, I, I don't mind don't like that's, that's what I like. I'm at the stage right now where I do so much content that I want to make sure I'm playing every day. I like playing every day and especially for baseball, I like taking weird shots. And so I like playing 150. And so since they've opened up all these contests on DraftKings, I love just MMEing and the mini max. If I lose, I lose. I don't care. 
Um, but if I win, it's say it's fun. It's a couple thousand dollars and that's where I'll take my shots on some cheap pitchers. So I can, I can still get my stacks of the expensive things. Yeah. I mean, I have no interest in Walker 17% case to 25 ISO 385 Woba doesn't generate enough ground balls. Doesn't generate enough, um, soft contact. I, I mean, overall, no real interest here for Taj John Walker for me. I get it though. I love cheap pitching. Um, cause like, at the end of the day, if you can get like 15 points out of Walker, it's okay, right? Like that's all you're yeah. kind of hoping for. Exactly. I mean, so me personally, though, I think I'll try to get my 15 points from Mitch Spence today at minimum salary against um, oh, yeah. the Rockies. Yeah, I'll have I'll I'll have a taste of Taiwan Walker because he's cheap, but I will have a lot of Mitch Spence. Um. Bats. Any interest in the Texas bats here? We should note that Adalas Garcia sat out on Tuesday dealing with like a little bit of a forearm injury. We'll see if he's back or not. Um, any interest here in the Rangers? A little bit. Um, probably more as power one-offs as opposed to uh, um, as opposed to uh, a full stack in this spot. Um I got distracted, sorry, because Jalen Brown hit a three-pointer to tie the game with uh, five seconds left at 117 in the conference finals. And so that uh, caught me off guard a little bit. Some good basketball going on over there. Um, but yeah, if I'm, I'm play- even though I'm playing Taiwan Walker, that doesn't mean I'm not going to stack against him. Corey Seager is back looking like Corey Seager lately, but he's not priced like it. Um, and so he's probably, he's with undoubtedly my favorite bat on the team as a one-off. Um, but I will get some stacks as well. A lot of Seager on his own and then some stacks as well. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, like Carter being back helps. They have, you know, obviously Carter, Seager, Lowe, Smith, like there's plenty of like stackable bats in this lineup. And like, it doesn't platoons doesn't really bother me against Tajon Walker. He's just bad to both sides of the plate. So it doesn't really matter. Um, he just strikes out righties at a little bit higher clip, but he also gives up more power to the righties. So, I mean, this is just a guy I love to stack against. Um, so I'll, I'll play just about anybody. Texas is one of the top stacks for me today. And then as far as the Philly bats go, I mean, Dane Dunning has not been terrible. We don't expect him to pitch like too deep into this game. Um, what are your thoughts here when it comes to Dunning? Love, uh, love Schwarber and uh, Bryce Harper as one-offs. Um, not probably not going to be doing a ton of full stacking, but uh, Schwarber and Harper, I think, are two of the best like mini stack one offs on the slate. I actually kind of don't hate the Philly stack just because, like, let's say Dunning goes like three or four innings. Texas bullpen has been the worst bullpen this season, so like, this could be a stack. Like, if they can get Dunning out in the third or fourth inning, like, he struggles and they hit him hard here, and they're to kind of kind of capping him coming back like this could be a spot where you get like the worst bullpen by a lot of metrics for multiple innings um so i don't mind like just saying hey i'm gonna attack this bullpen i'm gonna attack dunning coming back off the il and like there's plenty of upside but there's also some cheap bats in this lineup so i don't hate philadelphia today say you're like doing like a chalky stack and like you're looking at Philadelphia going, all right, well maybe they're not going to be chalky here and like it works out. So um, yeah, I mean, overall I don't hate Philadelphia today. It's more of like you want your stack to go off. So if they get the Dunning in like the third or fourth, and then you get the bullpen for five to six innings, like that's huge. This bullpen has really struggled this year. When I think, especially if you're playing lots of lineups, Philadelphia is probably almost always a team you want to have a few full stacks of. Yeah, I mean, power, home run upside for sure. Um, stolen base upside. I meant to say power, stolen base upside. Boston at Tampa Bay, seven and a half total here. At Tampa Bay, a 120 favorite. Bayo against Piat. Um, Piat coming <laughs> back. It's coming back. Um, was out for, it was like two weeks or something. Um, he got hit in the leg, right? Like it was, it, he got hit in the leg, had like a bruise and missed like two weeks. Um, so what are your thoughts here on Bayo first? He's 
cheap-ish where I think he's fine. Um, had a couple good games, but he's just not a huge strikeout pitcher. I'm probably not going to be getting to uh, Bayo very much. Good ballpark. Uh, good ballpark upgrade. He just hasn't shown like huge strikeout upside. Like he's had a couple like good games overall. It just hasn't been there consistently. I mean, I'm I'm on the I'm on the fence when it comes to Bayo. Um, like if he was seven K, I think I'd have so much more interest in him in this spot. I mean, Pepe on the other side of this game, the line drive stunk. But, like, he was actually pitching really solid to start the season. Boston is a team that has struggled um, with strikeouts. I mean, he didn't go to a rehab session, but they did. Like, he, I was reading he had, like, two or three really good bullpen sessions. What are we doing with Pepiot at 7,500? Yeah, I like him. I think that little IL tag beside his name is going to keep ownership down a little bit. 7,500 is just way too cheap for a guy with this upside. Um, he hasn't been going very high into the pitch count at all anyways. The most he's pit, the highest uh, he's pitched in the game this year is 94 pitches, and he's only gone over 90 pitches three times this season. Um, and so he's shown upside even with a limited pitch count. Strikeout stuff is there. Um, only 7,500 against Boston with a huge park uh, downgrade for them. I, I like him quite a bit. The price, I mean, it's kind of baked in a little bit. Like, this is a guy we were paying 9K for. Um, this yeah. is the cheapest he's been all year. So, him and Lizardo, I feel almost the exact same about. Like, that's, um, I, I really like this mid range of Lizardo and, uh, um, Lizardo and Pepio. And then, maybe some other shots on a couple guys like some Bassett's or some uh or Justin Steele against the um Atlanta's it is scary but man that price tag looks good on him we'll get to that later but I, I think I like that tier better than the upper tier of glass now Peralta any interest here in the Red Sox bats no yeah, I mean, Duran, Abreu, O'Neal, Devers, like the top four guys, if you end up on any of those guys, I think it's fine. Um, those guys have just been fantastic, but the rest of this lineup has really struggled. I mean, I will say, like, David Hamilton, I don't know if we expect it to keep going, but he's been really solid um, since landing on this team and, like, getting every day at bats. So, like, if you wanted to take some shots on Hamilton, he's 2,700, second base shortstop. Um, we always are typically looking for cheaper second baseman. Any interest in the uh, Tampa bats in this one? No, I don't really want to play Bayo. He's not a good strikeout guy, but I respect what he does in real life. And it's a big park upgrade from a pitching standpoint. So I think I'm just going to X out the bats in this game completely other than Raphael Devers. Yeah. I mean, Paredes would be the guy that I'd target Bayo with. I know, I know Bayo is better against righties, but he also is like a huge ground ball guy. Paredes is a big fly ball hitter. Um, so like if I was going to play anybody, it'd probably be Paredes. Um, I just, it's really hard to stack against Bayo because he generates so many ground balls and softer contacts. So Seattle at New York facing the Yankees. We got a seven and a half total. Yankees are 148 favorite. Bryce Miller, Nestor Cortez. Uh, any interest here in Bryce Miller? Cool. I, I don't really like targeting people going up against the Yankees. Um, why can't I? There he is, 8,500. I couldn't find Bryce Miller. But at the same time, 8,500 for Bryce Miller, I think, is reasonable. There's upside there. Um, Outs like yeah, there's Verdugo, yeah, there's Rizzo, but for, and of course there's Soto, but for the most part, like he's a lot better against righties than he is lefties, and so that does help mitigate Aaron Judge a little bit with the ability to actually strike him out. I think there's upside there for 8,500, but he's definitely not my top choice going up against the Yankees. Yeah, I mean we we keep talking about it, like the Yankees. Just striking out a lot less, like Soto coming, Verdugo's low strikeouts, Austin Wells at catcher. Um, that was like something we talked about a lot with Higgs last year is like how much he struck out. Like Wells is just like putting the ball in play or walking a lot. They're a very patient offense, so they push pitch, pitch counts like really high, really fast. So it's really hard for me to have a 
a lot of interest, if any interest here, in Bryce Miller. Cortez on the other side, though, I mean, he's starting to, you know, find it a little bit. He has some strikeout upside against one of the highest strikeout teams in baseball. I mean, it's really hard not to play pitchers in every day against this team, especially when they have some strikeout upside. Yeah, I keep wanting, I keep getting Cortez wrong anytime I play him. He does poorly, and anytime I don't, he has one of his light up games. But he has proven to me you can never X him out of the pool because the upside is there, and you definitely count to X him out of the pool against a team like Seattle. Um, don't know if he has the, I mean, yeah, no, he actually has, uh, he doesn't often get like super deep into games, but it's not due to pitch count. Actually. Yeah, no, that's not even true. He's gotten up over seven innings a couple times here. So, um, the upside is absolute. The downside scares me very similar to the other pitcher in the range, Michael King. Um, I think I, I think I prefer Jones more than Cortez, but I think I prefer Cortez to Michael King. Any interest in the Seattle bats in this one? No, not really. I think 10 games late. They're one of the teams I can get away from against Cortez. Maybe Garver. like some power hunting, yeah, um, like Julio Rodriguez, Garver, um, especially if he ends up in a spot like, uh, sorry, I was too quick to dismiss Garver. If he ends up in a spot like two or three, like he has been against these, and then especially, um, potentially even in the leadoff spot, Dylan Moore, who's just been one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Yeah, I was going to say, um, Garver at 3,200 as a catcher is very interesting. The big dumper, Cal Riley, always very much in play. And then um, you mentioned Moore. You know, he is someone that has been really good against left-handed pitching this season. So, I mean, this is a ballpark upgrade going into Yankee Stadium for these guys. Uh, the other side here, any interest in the Yankees against Miller? I have never seen uh, a couple teams in this basketball game. Sorry to keep derailing us on a large slate, but they, neither team wants to win. It's wild. It's turnover after turnover. Tatum just threw the ball to Indiana, and then they and then the Celtics fouled on a transition three-pointer. It's uh, some exciting but not great uh, basketball going on in that game. Um, you always have to have interest in the Yankees. Um, the lefties, especially, I feel like Soto, Rizzo, and Verdugo would probably be my priorities. And then, of course, John, uh, and Aaron Judge. Um, they're starting to get more and more expensive that they're a little bit tougher to get to. Um, but you throw in your Austin Wells. Um, Glaber Torres is starting to heat up a little bit, look more like himself, and the price hasn't gone up yet. Um, I think you can make it work, even though Bryce Miller is a good pitcher. Um the Yankees are are basically on my stack every slate list. All right, moving on here. We got the White Sox and the Blue Jays, eight and a half total in this game. Toronto, a 225 favorite. Mike Clevenger going up against Chris Bassett. Any interest here in Clevenger? No. Um, Blue Jays have been disappointing, but they don't really strike out. Um, I don't I just dislike Mike Clevenger as a person. And uh, I don't think there's much upside there either. He's super cheap, but I'm not playing him. Yeah, I mean, low strikeout offense, low strikeout pitcher, not a lot of upside, no chance I'm playing um, Clevenger in this one. I think the real question is, like, what are we doing with Chris Bassett today? I think I want to get there a little bit. Um, 7,200 is just too cheap. Yes, he gives up a power to lefties, but who are the lefties in this lineup we're worried about? Gavin Sheets? Um, he's had a few down games this year, but he's had some really good ones as well. And 7,200 is too cheap for the upside. He's not a guy that's likely going to go and strike out eight or nine, but he can get well over a hundred pitches. And if he does that, that could be seven or eight innings against the White Sox. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I like the matchup against the White Sox. They don't have a ton of power. I still worry about like the strikeout upside for Bassett. And I work, worry about the strikeout upside in this lineup. Um, he's cheap. He's 7,200. I think he's someone that can get a win in this spot. And maybe if he can get like 15 and then get the win, you know, kind of close in on that 20 mark um, at 7,200. I think he's playable today. Um, White Sox bats. Jimenez banged up right now. I know... Um, you know, he, well, he left the game with a hamstring, right? Like there's a good chance he doesn't play in this game. Um, you want to attack Bassett with lefties and it's just like, 
who are we attacking him with? I mean, that's I think that's the biggest concern is like outside of like Gavin Sheets, like there's just not a lot of left handed power in this lineup unless I'm not thinking of somebody. Yeah, no, I think you can one off Gavin Sheets, but that would be the only interest I would have in them at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm missing anybody. Um, and for what it's worth, um, just kind of like rank, but put, put this in context of the slate. I like Chris Bassett a lot more than Taiwan Walker. I like him less than Lizardo and Pepio. I will say if Jimenez does sit, they do have um, Dominic Fletcher on the bench. Like if he cracked the lineup, he's 2,100 um, going up against Bassett. I wouldn't hate taking some shots on him. It's a pun outfielder. Toronto bats uh, against Clevenger. I mean, they're, they love letting us down, but man, they're going to make a lot of contact in this spot against Mike Clevenger. Yeah. And obviously it's a bad example coming off their game against crochet where they only had two hits, but that guy this, is just a beast. We just need is. to accept that he's just a beast. Yeah, absolutely. He um, reminds me uh, and not to derail, but like he reminds me so much of Chris sale, like so much of Chris sale. Um, back when Chris Hale was like early Chris Sale days. Crochet is going to be somebody, if he can get the later stuff down, like not come out throwing 101 and come out throwing like 97 and progress, he's going to be someone we talk about for a long time. Anyway, sorry. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I keep talking about the NBA playoffs. So uh, as Tatum has potentially thrown in the dagger in there in a exciting uh, overtime here. So I don't blame you. You derail as much as you want. Hell, hell it's your show. So uh, I'm not going <laughs> to stop you. Um, Toronto bats here. I do think like this may be the time to get back on them because other than Danny Jansen, their prices are still pretty low. They're starting to hit a little bit better. There's they're accepting that, Hey, Varsho and Schneider have been two of our best hitters this year. Let's put them at the top of the lineup. Um, they're affordable and they're facing the worst pitcher on the slate. So yeah, they're in play, even though they're probably at top this year's gutless rankings. Yeah, I think they're in play as well. Um, very interested in the Blue Jays today. All right, moving on. We got Atlanta at Chicago. And this, this, what a tilting game with the wind and the weather that they had on Tuesday night. Max Free, Justin Steele, eight and a half total. Atlanta, one forty-five favorites. Um, I have not checked the weather yet. Any interest here in Max Freed? I think that it'll depend a lot on the weather weather max freed is the type of guy who almost like a better like the optim like the better version of chris bassett he's not gonna strike out a ton of guys most likely but he can throw 110 pitches get you eat up seven eight plus innings um the cubs aren't a team i really ever like to target if we get a big wind blowing in i'll play him if the wind's blowing out i won't it looks like it's going to be blowing out 8 to 12 miles an hour um, to right center. So we'll see what Roth has in the morning. Max Freed, I don't know if he's really affected by the wind at all. He's such a huge ground ball pitcher. Um, he has a little bit of strikeout upside. He has, you know, innings where he can go deep into games. Um, I think overall for me, I'm Max Freed. I will take the wait and see approach on like ownership around like 6 o'clock tomorrow and see like if people are playing him or not. If people are off on Max Freed, I, I could definitely see you taking some shots. Um, Justin Steele on the other side of this game, like Atlanta is so good. Um, I don't know what to expect out of Justin Steele right now. He did look a little bit better out against Pittsburgh, but like he's allowed five home runs over his last two games. It's just not very Justin Steele like. Um, I probably put him on the shelf, even though Atlanta, like Atlanta, they're like. This is such a good offense, and they've been disappointing in good matchups this year. But I mean, I think this is one of those spots I'm just gonna stack Atlanta again and not play the Cubs or play Steel. I think I'll probably play a little bit of Steel just because he's 7K. Um, but I acknowledge that that's likely a bad decision. Um, I don't feel good about it, it's probably gonna cost me money, but I'll get a little bit of Steel just because he's so cheap. And then, uh, in terms of the Atlanta stack. Absolutely, I'll be stacking against him as well. I, they struggled this year, but they're a little bit better against lefties. You get Duval in there. Um, Ozuna's 
should be 6,200, but is consistently still below 6K. Um, and so I'll keep loading up on him. Olsen's still cheap and fine in a lefty-lefty. Albies is better against lefties. Um, Arcia's cheap. So it's like, yeah, they're, they've are they been disappointing, but I'll keep losing money playing them every night. It's fun losing money playing them every day. Um, Chicago just won it in the bottom of the 10th, so that game's <laughs> over. And um, they just suspended the Baltimore game, so that game's not going to um, pick back up. And Cal Quantrill is dominating the Oakland Athletics. Um, so everything we projected yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I, all the Braves are in play. Ozuna would be my favorite. Massive fly ball guy. If Travis Darno is in there, I like his upside at catcher. Avi, uh, Ozzy Albies is, is someone that has a lot of power from the left side of the plate. I really hope um, Austin Riley is back for this game because this is a good spot for him. And then, like, Adam Duvall should crack the lineup at 3,300, so I like him. Cubs bats, I mean, I really hate playing hitters against Max Freed because he just generates so many ground balls. They don't have, um, like, this massive fly ball guy outside of Suzuki. Maybe Suzuki's the play here against Freed. But, yeah, I mean, overall... um, I was joking, Aaron. I, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I want to play Cubs outside of maybe some Suzuki and Morel. Um, Swanson's really cheap again, but I don't necessarily love him in this spot, but he is cheap. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, Morel is probably the most likely guy I'll go to here. Um, don't want a full stack, but I'll power hunt if the wind's blowing out. I will say, like, if they do hit like Swanson leadoff here against the lefty at 3,300. That's fine. Like, you could take yeah. shots on. All right, Colorado at Oakland. We got Gomber and Spence, eight total. Oakland, a 135 favorite. Any interest here in Austin Gomber? No. Even against Oakland, I can't play Austin Gomber. Yeah, I mean, he's had some good starts. He pitched really well last time out against um, Sandy. Yeah, San Diego. I think Austin Gomber is in play for me today. Uh, like, I do respect how good, like, Oakland is against left-handed pitching, but they also have a ton of strikeouts. And, like, you take this guy out of cores, and he pitches a lot better, obviously. Um, he has some strikeout upside. He's going to give up some home runs. But I think Austin Gomber is in play for me today. Um, and it feels dirty saying it out loud. But um, I think that this is a guy... When you're looking at this range, I think this is a guy you could take some shots on. Like, I'm not playing Nick Martinez. I'm not playing Walker. I'm not playing Clevenger. I'm definitely not playing Nelson, who we'll talk about in a minute. I'm not playing Steele. I'm not playing Dunning. And then it's Bassett. And I think Bassett might get some ownership today against the White Sox. So um, I think I might actually take some shots on Austin Gomber today. Um, I expect this to be a low-scoring game, as everyone else. Uh, Let's go to the other side, though. We got Mitch Spence, minimum salary here at 4K, 77 pitches last time out. They moved him back from the bullpen back to the starter. He's a rookie. Um, I mean, I don't know what to expect as far as, like, Mitch Spence. I don't know if he's going to be, like, long-term good or not. But he's minimum salary going up against the Rockies. I mean, there's nothing much to be said here. Minimum salary against the Rockies, best pitcher's park in baseball. I really don't care about anything else. Um, he'll probably be my highest on pitcher because I am a sucker for a 4K pitcher. Yeah, everybody should be. I mean, 15 out of this guy, and you're, like, super excited. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think overall – we have to have some interest. I mean, he is like an average strikeout pitcher, but he's above average ground ball pitcher. Again, a lot of his stats are out of the bullpen, so it's a lot easier to generate strikeouts and stuff from the bullpen when you're only coming out and throwing an inning or two. I think he can get five innings here and potentially score 15. I'm in. Um, Rockies bats. I mean, it's basically the two guys that I say every day. I think you could take shots on Tovar, and I think you could take shots on McMahon. Outside of that, Chris Bryant's back. Any interest in this team? I think you can take shots on Ryan McMahon, and I think you can take shots on Ezekiel Tovar. And I would throw in Brenton Doyle onto that list as well as a guy that you can absolutely play. Um, but that's it. I put those. I put those three guys in the pool. Um, played Colorado as a little bit of a mini stack in lineups. I don't have Spence, but that would be it. Any interest here in Oakland against Gomber? 
Yeah, much more likely to play Oakland. Brent Rooker is really good. Straight up really good. And so Brent Rooker at 4,500 is a one-off. I like to get to a lot. Uh, Langoliers as well. Abraham Toro, as long as he's leading off. J.D. Davis is probably going to get up into like that five spot. Um, so yeah, I like this team almost always more as a mini stack. Um, but I'll get to a little bit of full stacks as well, just cause it's Gomber. Yeah. As much as like I have interest in Gomber, I also have interest in the Oakland bats. That's the best thing about baseball. Um, I have interest in Toro, Roker, JD Davis. Um, I'm a guessing, I'm guessing Ruiz hits leadoff. If that happens, I have interest in him. I think it's more of a mini stack, um, for Oakland, like you mentioned, but I could see myself like pushing like a four man stack, like because like Tyler Nevins, another guy that's been really good against like left handed pitching. So Gomber is hittable. Um, it's just he's he's a little bit better outside of course. That's not really saying a lot, but Ruiz, Nevin have been really good against lefties, Roker, Davis. Um, some interest here for sure. Arizona at LA taking on the Dodgers. We got Nelson and Glass now facing off against each other. Any interest here in Nelson? No. As you should say, no. Um, Nelson against this team, no chance for me. 16% Ks, 420 Woba, 221 ISO. Swinging strike rate under 10%, whiff rate under 20%. You got to be able to attack the Dodgers lineup. This guy is in for a quick outing. Glass now on the other side. I mean, we kind of talked about it with Peralta. Um, I'll put these guys next to each other and say who has the lower ownership. But I think that clearly these are the two best pitchers on the slate. Arizona has been a little bit worse this season. I mean, you have to have interest in glass now on this one. Yeah, top draw points guy on the slate for sure. The only reason not to play him is if ownership gets a little bit too high um, because you can essentially play today. You could go two of Lizardo, Bassett, Pepio, or you can play Spence and Glass now together, and it's essentially the same price. Um, and so because we have that cheap pitcher, we will be able to get to, and then a lot of good SP2s as well in the 7K range, we will be able to get to glass now and still be able to afford some strong bats. He's the top raw points guy on the slate. The only reason I wouldn't get to a lot of them is ownership. All right, Arizona bats. Any interest here in Arizona against glass now? Small slates. I will stack against the top pitchers uh, just for leverage purposes, but I don't think the ownership on glass now will be high enough to warrant that. And on a 10 game slate, as wonderful as Arizona is, as much as I like to stack them all the time, Probably just not going to do it against Glass now. Dodgers on the other side of this game, I think they're the top stack on the slate. I, I know I say that all the time, but I mean, loading up on the Dodgers as much as possible again today. I'd be, it'd be interesting to take a look at the course of the season and see. I bet if you just never played once the entire year, the Dodgers, the Blue Jays, and the Braves you'd probably be significantly up money in MLB this year. Um, they've been nowhere near statistically as disappointing as uh, as a team like the Braves, but they, I still just seem to never get a full stack right with them. They never seem to click anytime I'm full stacking them. And if you look at their current season stats, it's it's Betts, Otani, Freeman, Teoscar, and Pajes as absolute studs and nobody else is really doing anything. Um, and so play the studs, Betts, Otani, Freeman, mix in some Hernandez and Paz in the outfield. Um, but I think Otani is my favorite play on the slate. He's the best play on the slate. I'll play him as much as I can. I don't know how much of the full stack I'll get to, but having said that, I, because I'm playing a lot of Miss Spence, I'll probably organically get to them a lot. Famous last words, not going to get to the Dodgers a lot. <laughs> the, like, uh, I'm, I, I know I'm going to end up with kidding. at least like 40% Mitch Spence. And so because the Dodgers are expensive, I'm probably going to end up with a lot of Dodgers too. Yeah, Hayward's back too. He should be back in the lineup here against the righty, um, 3,300. So he's another guy that, you know, potentially makes the stack overall cheaper. But yeah, I mean, I, I love the Dodgers in this spot. Um, Cal Quantrill, what a what an outing from Cal Quantrill. We talked about him on, on the podcast yesterday. Hopefully, I talked Keith into him. Um, because I, I was pitching hard for Quantrill, and we both kind of 
did the we have heartburn kind of thing but another um another quality outing for cal contra i think i don't think he comes back so not jinxing anything but eight or six innings eight strikeouts and looks like he's gonna have a chance to pick up the win so could potentially be one of the highest scoring pitchers on the slate so let's hope it works uh, out i just realized that uh jose altuve is not going to be getting another at bat in this game and he is absolutely just bringing down my team in 21st of 49,000 entries right now um with the big old zero from jose altuve do you have bregman no i have garcia in that spot he had a 30 piece all right well i'm hoping for a bregman home run i'm sorry um <laughs> let's play the morning grind game and uh let's get out of here under 8k to get uh six or more strikeouts who do you got today i will go uh lizardo i figured that um that's who i had written down i'll go bassett i don't know if he necessarily gets there or not but i think he has the next best chance um over 8k to score under 15 who is your bust today I will go with Blake Snow. Yeah, I like that one too. I'm going to go with Bryce Miller. Uh, low strikeouts. I mean, the Yankees are just a low strikeout team. It's a ballpark downgrade for Bryce Miller. Um, not going to end up on Bryce Miller today. Over 4K to hit a home run. Who's going yard today? Over 4K to hit a home run. Who are some of the teams that we liked here? I will go with... I'm going to go with Brent Rucker. All right. I'm going to go Jake Cronenworth going up against Nick Martinez. Hit his ninth home run of the season. Under 4K to get two hits. Who's a cheap bat that you like today? Cheapy, I'm going to go with Travis Darno. All right. I was looking at some of these Texas bats, trying to figure out which one I wanted to pick here. Um, I think. I'm going to end up on Josh Smith to get two hits today. Multiple hits in two of his last three games. Stack to score six or more runs. Who do you got? I'm going to go Cincinnati. The Reds. Way back to the first game we talked about. Like it against Michael King. Uh, I'm going to go Dodgers. Love Dodgers today. They're going to rock it up. Uh, Any player... Props or pick em plays that you like on this slate? I have uh, not looked ahead at that yet. Um, and so I always forget that that's a part of the question, the morning grind game now. So <laughs> I always forget to look. And so, no, nothing the night before. Well, I will say, like, there's not a lot up yet. Um, I was looking pre show and I'm looking, I'm just kind of clicking through really quick. Um, there's just not a lot up. I'll be interested to see what Cortez's strikeout number comes in at. And then I've been betting Tajon Walker's under strikeouts. Um, so if that comes in at like four and a half, five and a half, I like that. And then I'll be looking at Jared Jones strikeout prop. Those are ones that I'll be keeping an eye on. Um, kind of see what we're looking at for them. Any lines, money lines against the spreads? I'm taking a peek at that now. No, not really. Nothing. I'm looking at this and I'm like, ah, oh, no, that looks about right. Ah, oh, no, that looks about right. Uh, maybe the Brewers uh, minus 135 at Miami. Yeah, I mean, nothing jumping off the page to me. I'm really interested to see what the total is in the Philadelphia game. Um, that's one that I'm going to be checking. It's not up. I just checked again. It's not up yet. Maybe even the uh, the Reds is underdogs. I don't mind either. Yeah, I mean, if like if the Philly game comes in at eight and a half, um, I would take the over in that game. But I'll, I'll wait and see what it comes in at before I speculate. Um, I don't know it. if this will be accurate to like sports books at all, but I'm looking at an app right now that has it at nine and a half. I think that's the right number. Um, if I had to guess, that'd be the number that I'd put it at. But I was hoping it'd come in at eight and a half or nine. Maybe I'll check in the morning and it'd be down on half a run or something. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of scoring in that Texas Philadelphia game. All right, TJ, that's going to wrap it up here for Wednesday. We appreciate everyone hanging out with us. I'll be on crunch time tomorrow morning around noon Eastern to break down the early slate. We're back tomorrow talking more baseball. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you then.